Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's going to be a new set of videos I'm going to do. And it's going to be similar to one that I produced a little while ago and kind of fell off halfway through. And I think the mistake I made was that I like built the thing ahead of time. So this one, I'm going to build it as I go. So it's October. It's Oktoberfest. And, you know, I've kind of been taking time off of building projects and building things. And I decided that that was fine. You know, after a bit of a struggle, I decided that was fine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go and do about half an hour every morning for the month of October and attempt to build at the very least one product. And I'm going to show you that entire process. I haven't really done anything, um, the entire process from start to finish. So let me give you a kind of a little bit of an idea of what we're going to build. And then in this first episode, I'm just going to walk through the very most basic setup that I do with any new project. So let's get into it. First things first would be what are we going to build? And I've been going on this journey of starting to learn how to rock climb. Now I'm afraid of heights, so I haven't been doing any top roping or anything that's you know up a huge high wall. But I've been doing bouldering ever since you know where I am in Canada. The pandemic allowed us to open gyms, which has been about three months, and I'm I'm loving it. I'm going about three times a week. But I have no great way of being able to just track what I climb. And it, and I don't mean like something in depth. I mean, just I don't want to carry around a notebook and write down the grade and then kind of maybe sketch out the boulder that I'm trying to climb. Um, if you haven't, if you don't know what bouldering is, you know, I would take a look at it briefly. You place these, you know, fake rocks, so they call them holds, on the wall in different patterns. And they're like problems. You know, you have to solve them before you can just climb them. And so it's great fun. You try and solve them and you, you try and climb them up and you get to reach the top. It doesn't sound that difficult, but when you, when you watch some of the problems and some of the people do them, they're, they're, you know, it's quite, quite fun, quite hard. So it's really enjoyable, but yeah, I couldn't track them. I didn't know, what, I didn't know how to track them. So I want to create this application to just track my climbs. Now, there's a few requirements for me to do that. And I want to keep it simple, right? So I'm not going to go into bake a whole bunch of things in, at least not initially. The requirements for me are being able to quickly visualize that route or that boulder. So when I come up to climb it, I want to say, I don't want to forget, you know, which ones I climbed. I want to be able to see the route that I took, which is just, I want to be able to upload a photo pretty much. I want to take, take a photo of it, of the route that I am about to climb and use that, you know, to, to, to remind me about what I was climbing and that sort of thing. The other thing is boulders have different types of grades. There's different like versions of the grading systems, um, but either way you, you have a grade and you can enter, you know, beginner grade up to whatever. And I want to be able to track the grade progress. So I'm going to say I started on, let's say a V0, which would be you know just a very basic grade. Uh, and we I climbed all the way up to like I'm in V6 now. I'm climbing V6 and I want to be able to track how long that take me, how many of those type of boulders am I climbing per session. How many of them am I topping? How many of them am I, am I flashing? Which means just uh, on your first try, making it to the top. So I want to track that. And then I want to track the number of attempts. That's another big thing. So when I'm, when I'm trying to get up another level in my climbing, I want to be able to say, I tried this one six times or 10 times, so I finally made it. Um, or maybe just once, and it was a flash. So it's a pretty simplistic app, but something that I think can, you, know, you can add on pretty quickly. Like, you know, if I take a picture, and I forget for some reason I don't want to I don't look back through the application, and uh, I take a picture again of the same one. I should be able to pretty easily say, "Hey, this one looks a lot like that other one you took," and maybe you already climbed it, and we should just merge the results so we keep track. But anyway, we're just going to start off with something very simple, which is just take a picture, write down the number of attempts, or be able to increment the attempts pretty easily, and let let you know the grade. So I'm going to call it always be sending or ABS, and I, I just tried to kind of get a fun URL, so it's gonna be called abs, ABS, always be sending dot rocks, always be sending rocks, which I thought was was kind of fun. Um, I didn't, this is about as far as I got in terms of designs and, and thinking, um, and this I think will cover designs, I'm gonna go through and now, this is probably a caveat, I am not a professional designer <laughs> by any means, nor do I know how to use Figma well. So even though I will show you kind of my process, about how I go about it. Uh, I should say, do not copy me. You should probably find someone way better at, at Figma than I am. 
but yeah, so that's kind of the what the app's going to be. This, I, I'm liking the way this looks right now. I want to keep it light and simple. Um, so we'll get into that design later. That's kind of what the app is going to be. So let's do the setup. Let's do the setup. So my setup initially would be creating a GitHub repository. It's the first thing. And I'm going to develop this in the open. I'm going to get a public repository. So this is my GitHub. I've added my repository name, gave it a little description. Public, I, I love these new like options, but you can tick them all off. So I tick them all off. Uh, license, get ignore for node and readme. And I pick node because I'm going to be writing this in all JavaScript. So I'm going to write it in, I'm thinking maybe I'll try TypeScript, but uh, possibly just JavaScript. And I'm going to use Next.js. What in the world happened here? It just changed my name. That was weird. Oh, I must have clicked on this by accident. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to use Next.js, um, which is in JavaScript. And I'm going to deploy it on Vercel, which allows you to have. API routes baked into that. So I don't have to, I'm just gonna write everything in JavaScript. Um, so I'm gonna get ignore template of, of nodes. So I'm gonna create this, boom, create that. And my setup video is gonna be quite, quite short. I'm hoping, I'm not gonna get into it too much though. I could get into a lot. So I'm gonna grab the code. I got the new GitHub CLI, which is awesome. So I'm gonna copy that. And then terminal, there we go. I'm gonna go in my git folder and paste that command. Cloning it, perfect. Go into that directory. Here we are, great. Okay, so a, a couple things I'm gonna add and I'll walk through kind of each packages and, and what my, my logic is. So uh, there's a there's a very basic, I like to start with interface when it comes to developing and I, help, I think it helps you know bridge between design and implementation. And it gets you thinking about how am I gonna structure the API, the application program interface. How am I going to structure the calls? How am I going to store data? That sort of thing. So I start off with, with you know just adding those packages that I just kind of my default for all, every new every new um, repository, or at least projects or, or web applications. So I'm going to I'm use yarn. So I'm just going to do a yarn init minus y. Just yes to everything so we get that done quickly. Good. And then I'm going to add yarn add next. React, React DOM, which are the requirements for Next.js. Then a couple of things that I'm going to add that I that I um I use and I use them all the time. So fetch is now baked into Next, but a good way to maintain state in your application using fetch is SWR or stale while revalidate, and that's a great package. We'll learn how to use that a little bit while I develop. Um, I tend to just use the baked in styling uh, with Next, which is called styled JSX. So I'm not going to install style components or anything like that. But what I am going to install is um, the Geist UI. Now, I don't exactly remember what the package name is. Let me just take a quick peek. Right, that makes sense. It's just going to be Geist UI React. And Geist UI is the, you might say, I feel like a Verso uh, fanboy here, but <laughs> which I am, most definitely. Uh, but it's also, it's the user interface or the components built that uh, Versal uses. But anyway, it's 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 a great library to get up and going quickly with, with a good set of components. Um, the overriding of the styles, I haven't really worked around and played around with too much, but at this point, you know, for a prototype product, it's very, very simple to use. And I don't think you're gonna wanna override the defaults too, too much. So here we go. Um, anything else? Anything else I need to be adding in here? We have no backend stuff if you've noticed just yet, and I'll just talk about potentially what I'm gonna be using. I think that's it for the initial go. SWR, React on React Next, and some UI components. I'm sure I forgot something, but we'll just we'll leave it at that for now. So let's add those packages up. Great. Okay. Now what I want to do here is code. It's going to open up this in VS Code. So I just take a quick peek at the package JSON, abs rocks, mains indexture, it's not a package that's fine, repository, great. Uh, licenses MIT, which is incorrect. I'm using a different license, but we'll fix that later. Uh, Geist UI, got a canary version, which is great. Next, React, React DOM, and SWR, which is awesome. So we have kind of everything we need. Everything we need is all in there. Package JSON is all set. We installed our packages. So just for the initial sort of setup, I just want to make sure that I can create some pages and uh, maybe just toss a button on there. So I'm going to go here and Next.js, you create a pages directory. And again, another more detailed Episodes maybe I can talk about about these, but what this how this works. But I'm gonna create an index.js file. This is kind of our home page, and I'm going to export a component. So I'm gonna create a component called home. So 
going to be a simple React component, and maybe I should import some elements from Geist UI, so like a button. I think they have a page component, page, a button, and I believe they have text. Let me just see how much I can get far without using the documentation. Geist dash UI slash React. And then I'm going to return, I don't need to return here, no state yet. So let's do a page, whoops. Oh my goodness, typing page. Inside that page, we'll toss a text in. We'll just call it always be sending. And then end the page. And we'll just toss in a button here saying welcome with a capital. Perfect, and then we'll export that as the default component. Be the default export of that file. Great. I'll open up my terminal here. And oops, that's what we're missing. There's no scripts, so let's add the scripts. There's three scripts we're gonna need for deploying to Versal, as well as starting and, and developing. So we need start, which next gives us such handy commands like next start. We need build. So instead of start, we have next to build. And then we need dev. So dev and next dev. And that allows us to do our development locally, which is going to be great. OK. I also realized you know, I don't like, I should create a template for doing projects, but I don't like semicolons. So let's, <laughs> let's go and remove those with a dot prettier rc. Here we go. JSON file. Do I did dot prettier rc.json? That's fine. So semi is the flag, and I just put false. Good, we'll save this, no more semicolons, hooray. And then we can do yarn dev. And that should bring up, oh, I have a typo in script. I scripts, I forgot an S. Brilliant. Dev, here we go. Started on 3000, hooray. So I'm just gonna pop into this browser here. Okay, there we go, now that worked. Good, so we got our button. We got lovely components you can just drop in. Now you can change the color scheme and stuff in here through customization. These are all the defaults. You can go ahead and change these and maybe I'll customize them, but uh, for now, we'll just leave it. So there we are. So that's all set up. Now you're wondering, okay, how about like backend? We're gonna be sending images to like save them. We probably should have some authentication, some way of like storing and having graphs and collecting data and all that great stuff, which yes, definitely. We can't just have, you know, one landing page like this and be done. So what we need to do here uh, is I'm going to, I think I've chosen, I wanted something simple. I wanted something really simple to be able to move quickly with this development. You know, half an hour every morning is not a lot. So I'll move quickly with this development, which means that I need something that I can, you know, whip up pretty quickly. I can do, you know, image uploads relatively simply, I can do authentication relatively simply. And I haven't played with this in a long time, but I've been recently trying out Firebase. If you've not heard of Firebase, you more than likely have. It's been around for a long time, but Firebase is this great system. I can almost call it like a platform now, but um, it has, let's say products. It has like a bunch of different products to allow you to do and build apps, build better apps, as you can see. So they have Firestore, which is like a database, which is great docking kind of storage. Uh, they have authentication handled, which is also great. So you get different types of authentication. They have great cloud storage as well for images and that sort of stuff. They have like other things like real-time database and hosting us, fun things like that, but I'm more interested in just you can store my images with Cloud Store. You can do authentication for me with your authentication. And this uh, Firestore here allows me to do like a NoSQL database, but also offline support, which is even better. It's kind of like what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use Firebase um, to do the back end. And that's kind of what my setup is going to be like. Let's just do our first pull request here after we've set this code up. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in all my changes, minus A. And I just want to make sure by queuing git status that I am committing the right things. So there's a bunch of new files. Pretty RC, definitely want to add that. Packages on yes. My index in my pages directory, I did want to add that. And yarn lock, I do want to add that. Good. So I want to add all of those. So I'm going to commit them. So commit minus M, I can do a message and we'll do initial. Oh, I can't commit to, this is my main branch. I can't commit to main. Um, okay, git checkout minus B. I'm going to create a feature. Feature. And we'll call it setup front end. 
set up front end because we haven't really set up the back end yet. So we'll check that out. Great. Okay, good. So front end setup. We'll get add these if they already are added. We'll get commit them. We're gonna say setup uh, project add front end JS packages. Boom, give that a good push. Darn it, I have this lovely command. Boom, that'll push up, lovely. Okay, great, we'll create a pull request. We can merge it because there's nothing in there. I'll design myself for fun, set up the project, create the pull request. Awesome, and it can merge. And I think we'll try and set up as well as possibly some, some tests and things later on. Good, so there's the uh, there's the first video done. So we got our, our code all set up. We have our first page rendering. We have our pretty RC file. We have our script set up and our initial dependencies set up. Here's our first page. And then we've kind of picked out what we're gonna be using for the back end. Now, next video, we're gonna go into, I think a bit of design. And then following that, we're going to get into which following that is, that's, that's tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be doing design. And then following that, we're going to be doing some planning, planning about how the back end should work and how should we upload things and how should we handle authentication and why. And that'll be a fun, exciting video. All right. Thank you all for watching. Uh, give a like and subscribe for more of this type of content. If you don't like this content, leave a comment below about what you'd like to see. Thanks, take care, see you tomorrow.